हेलो रिवन आई यू बिल्कुल हेवी वेल कैलवन अक्षता खडेजा राजीव दिलशान ग्रेट ग्रेट गोइंग नाउ सो योर सर इज ट्रैवलिंग टुडे सो ही वोंट टेक क्लास टुडे सो आई हैव बीन आस्क फॉर द सेम ओके नाउ सो वी वर लर्निंग अबाउट ग्रेप वाइन कम्युनिकेशन वी हैव ऑलरेडी लर्न अबाउट इट राइट राइट एवरीवन केल्विन अक्षता खडेजा दिलशान राजीव एंड जॉर्ज या सो वी आर गोइंग टू गो इन टू द ब्रीफ एस्पेक्ट ऑफ इट ग्रेप वाइन कम्युनिकेशन सो वॉट कैन यू जस्ट राइट अ शॉर्ट डेफिनेशन फॉर ग्रेप वाइन कम्युनिकेशन एज यू अंडरस्टैंड इट yeah everyone needs to write that now everyone should write that down oh, uh, rajiv you are saying informal communication uh, where in an organization i guess right yes please yes kelvin akshata rajiv yes sure khadija you can do the same what is grape wine communication just write down the definition as you understand that so it's like a kind of rumor that people start with in kind of informal communication within an organization right now unstructured and informal network formed on social relationship rather than organizational chart or job description informal vehicle through which message flow throughout the organization right so it is an informal communication uh, which might be true which not, might not be true and which flows throughout the organization right that is un, so it is unstructured and informal network now organizational grape wine early research finding transmits information rapidly in one direction because see we are the members of many groups uh, in an organization right so it is like if i know something you know humans have got uh, the habit of gossiping about it so this is how it transmits in rap very rapidly in all directions right follow the cluster chain pattern more active in homogeneous groups transmit some degree of truth so you just cannot you know get the surety for the information whether it's true or not it might be true it might be partially true it might not be true at all so it transmits some degree of truth but it is um, uh, correct by 100% no one can guarantee that right now types of grape wine uh, let's learn about the types of grape wine communication messages transmitted through the grape wine are normally referred to as rumors wish fulfillment rumors identifying the wishes and hopes of employees bogey rumors exaggerating employees fears and con uh, concerns fine so let's learn about the types of grapevine communication in detail types of grapevine first one is wedge drivers rumors what is that aggressive it is aggressive unfriendly and damaging they split groups and dissolve alliances okay home stretcher rumor anticipating final decisions or announcement they tend to fill the gap during the times of ambiguity fine uh wait i'm going to explain to you in simple language to what is this wedge driver rumor now wait just give me a moment see so let's learn about this wedge driver rumor what do you understand by wedge driver wedge driver rumor yes people see when it comes to wedge driving rumors okay it is motivated by aggression prejudice or hatred on the part of those if you are prejudiced about something you will and you start spreading rumors in the organization that would be a wedge driving rumor so uh, 
if you are hatred uh, if you have hatred over something okay you you will start spreading the every that in uh, organization that will uh, fall under wedge driving rumor fine okay i'm going to give you an example yes 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 correct uh, other than kelvin others are not uh, responding what is the matter what is a wedge driver rumor are you able to understand it or should i explain it to you again please let me know yes what is a wedge driver rumor i'll i'll give you an example i'll give you good evening good evening very good evening so let me explain it to you in detail what is wedge driving rumor see if you are um, you know if you are prejudiced about something if you are agitated over something in in organization and if you start spreading rumors about it that would be a wedge driving rumor okay wedge driver divide groups and destroy loyalties they are motivated by aggression or even hatred okay they are divisive and very negative rumors they tend to be demeaning to a company or individual and can cause damage to the reputation of others fine a wedge driver rumor may be someone at x company saying that v company serves warm in their hamburgers okay or in another context a school age child telling friends that another child has aids that would be a wedge driver rumor see what what is happening in this example second example a child is telling his friends that other child is having aids so this is like spoiling the reputation of that another child right right everyone clear and sometimes you know people gossip uh, um, you know like this that uh, you know she uh, this lady might be doing favors to the bosses that's why she is getting promotion so that is that too falls under wedge driver rumor fine is it clear everyone what is a wedge driving rumor okay george sheikh prabhavati khadija mohammed dilshan rajiv and akshita and kelvin is it clear what is a wedge driving rumor prabhavati how about you prabhavati i cannot see your response sheikh mohammed is it clear okay great great now home stretcher rumors anticipating final decision or announcement they tend to fill the gap during times of ambiguity So, what is the home stretcher rumor? They are anticipatory rumors. These rumors often occur after employee has been waiting a long for an announcement. So, home stretcher is like they will predict the result. Okay, there may be just one final thing necessary to complete the puzzle, and this effect enhances the ambiguity of the situation. Like you people might have given interview for some, I mean, interview for promotion, and uh, you know only one more stage is left out, and you start anticipating like something of that kind. fine so if you are uh, uh, you know anticipating final decision and uh, the rumors that pop up at that time that would be a home stretcher rumor fine all right now let's proceed ahead spontaneous group okay when people are stressed or in an untrustworthy environment they spread just a second this is like wait this is like okay pre mediated rumors spread within highly competitive environment now four types of grapevine chain let's learn about grapevine chain single strand chain what is this uh, single strand chain it's like this it flows like a chain a tells something to b which tells to c and so on so if the rumor is flowing like this a to b b to c c to d the longer the strand the more distortion and filtering effects most in accuracies occur in this chain see when it is a single strand chain in comes of in terms of grapevine uh, communication then you know as it is going to move from one person to another and as the length of the chain is going to increase 
more inaccuracy will be there because everyone will manipulate the situation i mean the rumor in their own manner they will interpret it in their own manner the way they feel like interpreting it right so most inaccuracies occur in this chain clear great now single strand chain now let's proceed ahead to the next one gossip chain now what happens in this gossip chain one person tells to other person this chain passes a message regarding a not on job nature generally considered to be slow in passing the information okay so a passes information to other members so this is a gossip chain a is gossiping about something and others are you know catching it fine this is a bit slow as compared to the earlier one probability chain information may move from anybody to anybody right this chain is found when information is somewhat interesting but not really significant only some people in the organization will get to know the information so probability chain is like some information uh, which is interesting but not significant so only few will get to know about it others won't okay so that would be a probability chain only some people will know about it cluster chain individual communities with only those individuals he or she trusts cluster chain is the dominant grapevine pattern in an organization it's okay most informal communication flows through this chain what happens in a cluster chain what do you know about cluster chain anyone anyone yes group chain okay like how can you give me an example explain it to me how cluster chain what happens can you give me an example yeah that is okay but can you cite out an example okay i have got diagrams for this uh, i'm going to put it on the board okay so just wait for a while i'm going to put the diagram on the board so that you can understand it in a better manner yes correct now so let me put the diagram on the board please yeah see when it comes to cluster cluster is like that of grapes right the cluster like grapes have several groups of people linked together by a cluster or chain of communication right so uh, in this you know it is going to flow from one cluster to another right like uh, a bunch of one bunch of grapes to another bunch of grapes clear okay so let uh, it is going to come on the board in few seconds till then uh, we are going to switch over to this cluster chain is the dominant grapevine pattern in an organization so it is moving from my group suppose uh, uh, an organization has got many groups like a b c d till z so a is going to spread it to b b group is going to spread it to c so it is like most in, uh, and group has got more number of people right group can have more group will always have more than one people right so that is why it is the most dominant grapevine pattern in an organization clear now continue a tells something to a few selected individuals and then some of these individuals inform a few other selected this is how it happens right a is telling it to his or her friends like b c okay uh, and f okay now f is spreading it to e and d okay then d is spreading it to s like this fine advantages of grapevine communication as we have done earlier spreads rapidly feedback is quick uh, quick group cohesiveness emotional support signals problems good news exists substitute for formal channel of communication so these are the advantages but there are many disadvantages to hostility 
untruth information most of the time. So in most of the cases, grapevine communication is an untruth. That's not true. Partial information only spreads and hampers the goodwill of an organization or people, right? Clear? Okay, great. Shall we proceed ahead to the next topic? Today we are going to do HR management laws and regulations. Are you able to see the board properly? Uh, uh, what I will do, the chart you can see it from the document. I, I'll put it in the form of, you know, notes. Wait. Okay. So what we are going to do under this, uh, like laws and regulations are there. So HR management and regulations. This is what we are going to study. Okay. Uh, so let's learn about it. Okay. So please uh, pay heed to the board. Now, laws and regulations at the federal, state and local levels regulate how companies conduct staffing. Right. So they, they just cannot, you know, like recruit anyone like that. Okay, there are certain rules and rules and regulations for the same. Title uh, 7 of the 1964 Civil Rights Act banned most discriminatory hiring practices. So uh, if the company is discriminating in between the genders on the basis of nationality, then, you know, uh, that is barred under the human rights law, human management law. Okay. Three sensitive areas of legal concern that managers must comply with are equal opportunity, affirmative action and sexual harassment. Okay, described in the following section. To prepare, um, you know, to, you know, keep the employee safe. If, we, if I am working for the company and if these laws are not there, who is going to ensure my safety, right? So these laws actually keeps us safe, right? It is in the well-being of an employee, right? So that no injustice is being done to employ on these grounds and if someone is doing any injustice to you on on um, the basis of gender or something then they are this is a punishable act so that's why these laws are very important and one should know about it because all of us are the part of an organization and if we are aware of these laws no one can cheat us and if someone is trying to uh, you know we can take action on the basis of these laws right these areas as well as other laws impact all human resource practices. Equal opportunity employer. Now what is that? Equal employment opportunity. Individuals covered under equal employment opportunity, that is EEO law, are protected from illegal discrimination which occurs when people who share a certain characteristic such as race, age or gender are discriminated against because of that characteristic. So see, if someone is a male and I am a female and if a company is discriminating on the basis of gender, then that is a punishable act that is not justified under human resource law right so they cannot discriminate on the basis of age gender race right if i am a you know jewish if i am suppose a muslim okay and someone is a hindu and um, they are just willing to take people who is hindu and they are not willing to take people who is a muslim um, someone who is a muslim then that is again a punishable act they cannot do that right and we can file a suit on the basis of that right if they are doing that with us fine everyone people who have designed it characteristics are called protected class federal laws have identified the following characteristics for protection race ethnic origin color and some you know no one can discriminate on the basis of skin color also right and gender also gender women including those who are pregnant age individuals over 40 individuals with disabilities that is physical and mental nobody has got right to you know if some men, you know if someone is having any kind of disability and they have came for the interview they cannot be rejected on that basis unless and until you know that thing is objecting um, as far as that job role is considered their job role is considered okay military experience Vietnam era veterans religion special beliefs and practices so no one can discriminate on the basis of religion age gender race individual with disabilities and if someone is doing that that is a punishable act the main purpose of eeo law is to ensure that everyone has equal opportunity of getting yours or being promoted at work fine so it's not like if someone is doing their job uh, just a second please I'll, I'll be just a second
back. Sorry for the trouble. I mean, sorry for keep. I kept you waiting. I'm sorry about it. I got an important phone call, so I was attending that. Okay. Yeah, Rajiv, you are asking something. Okay. Okay. Uh, Prabhavati, are you able to hear me well now? Is everyone able to hear me well? Is my voice perfectly audible? Great. Great. Now. The main purpose of EEO laws is to ensure that everyone has equal opportunity of getting a job or being promoted at work. Okay. So no one can, you know, um, like stop you from being getting promoted on the basis of these, um, you know, like if the, see if there is a woman and if she is pregnant, it's not like she is not likely to get, uh, you know, no one can um, get biased if she is pregnant because you know, uh, um, like this was a very controversial issue earlier, you know, uh, like uh, a company actually they, this this uh, case got very famous, you know, there was a lady and she was. A very, very, you know, she was a very, very efficient worker. Okay, so she was likely to get. Uh, this was actually this case happened in India earlier, so that's why I'm talking about it. So she actually, she was a very good, uh, you know, like worker. Okay, and she was a excellent worker for that company. Okay, and she was sitting at a very high level position. Okay, she got married, and um, she got after marriage, she got pregnant. Okay, so the employers started discriminating. And they even, you know, like uh, uh, gave her pink slip. Okay, so she has fought a case on the, this bag, on this uh, thing only because you know under law, if someone is pregnant, because company people they used to believe that she, if someone is pregnant, uh, she cannot, uh, her mind won't work as well as it used to work earlier. Okay, so uh, she has won the, uh, you know, this thing, that case. So if you really want to uh, see. If in an organization, if you don't want anyone in your organization to cheat you, you should be aware of these laws. So that if someone is trying to, you know, like hinder your progress because of these, you know, on the if because they are, because biasness is there in their mind, you being a female or you being uh, or of some other race, uh, you can fight against it. Okay, if you are aware of these laws, clear everyone. Is it clear everyone? Affirmative action. While EEO laws aim to ensure equal treatment at work, affirmative action requires the employer to make an extra effort to hire and promote people who belong to a protected group. Affirmative action includes specific action designed to eliminate the present effects of past discrimination. Employees are also protected by Equal Employment Opportunity Commission, which was established through the 1964 Civil Rights Act. Title 7. The scope of authority of the EEOC has been expanded so that today it carries the major enforcement authority for the following laws. Now, what is the Civil Rights Act of 1964? Are you aware of the Civil Rights Act of 1964? Everyone out there. Civil Rights Act of 1964. See, it prohibits discrimination on the basis of race, color, religion, national origin or gender. Okay? So, if someone is discriminating on the basis of race, color, that is skin color, religion, okay, national origin or gender, then uh, that is a punishable act, okay. Civil Rights Act of 1991 reaffirms and tightens pro uh, prohibition of discrimination. So, see this law was being made to, uh, in the well-being of, uh, of the employees, right, so that no one can discriminate on the basis of race, color, religion. So, uh, these, uh, this has been tightened, okay. This by passing another law which is known as Civil Rights Act of 1991. Okay, this is to tighten Civil Rights Act of 1964. Fine, permits individuals to sue for punitive damages in cases of intentional discrimination and shift the burden of proof to the employer. Clear? So, in order to tighten the Civil Rights Act of 1964, Civil Rights Act of 1991 has been passed on. Fine. Equal Pay Act of 1963 prohibits pay differences based on sex for equal work. You know, like uh, in case of fourth grade employees, okay, 
uh, those people who work uh, in the making of a building, right? Labors and all, labor class people. You know, women labors are being paid less as compared to a male labor. And since see, they are not aware of these laws, so they take that thing. Okay, they never, you know, uh, raise question on that. See, if both the genders are performing the same task, why women employ, employ has to be paid less, right? So if someone is discriminating in terms of pay, okay, on the basis of gender, okay, uh, if you are give, doing equal work as compared to your male counterpart, you can file a suit against them, okay, you can sue them, fine. Is it clear everyone? Sure? No. All right, all right. Okay, okay, fine. So, yeah. Shall we proceed ahead? No. All right, all right. Okay, let's proceed ahead. Okay. Fine. Now, Pregnancy Discrimination Act of 1978 prohibits discrimination or dismissal of women because of pregnancy alone and protects job security during maternity leave. So see, every employer has to give you a maternity leave. And what is the duration of maternity leave? And you will be paid during your maternity leave. What is the duration for maternity leave? Please let me know. What is the duration for maternity leave? I'm sure uh, females must be knowing that. Yes, three months. Correct. So they have to pay you for those three months. Okay. American with Disability Act prohibits discrimination against individuals with physical or mental disabilities or chronically ill and requires that reasonable accommodation be provided for the disabled. Fine? Yeah, correct. Energy. Vocational Rehabilitation Act prohibits discrimination on the basis of physical or mental disabilities and requires that Employer, employees be informed about affirmative action plans. Most, this is in US, not in India. Most employers in the United States must comply with the provision of Title VII. Compliance is required from all private employers of 15 or more persons, all educational institutions, state and local governments. And see, we have got, you know, a reservation for disabled people in our constitution too, like Indian constitution, right? Right? Okay. Now, sexual harassment. Okay. Uh, so let's learn about this. Wait. Just give me a moment, please. Conduct here and complete. Yeah. So I'm going to put it separately. Okay. Because here it's not visible fully. Okay, so I'm going to put it on another whiteboard. I hope this much is clear to you. All right. Now, few workplace topics have received more attention in recent years than that of sexual harassment. Since Professor Anita Hill confronted Supreme Court nominee Clarence Thomas on national television over a decade ago, the number of sexual harassment claims filed annually in the United States has more See, you cannot rule out the possibility of sexual harassment at your workplace, right? So there are strict laws for that too. Now, see, this is the part of life, right? We cannot deny this thing, right? So there are, uh, you know, laws for this too. Since 1980, U.S. courts generally have used guidelines from the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission to define sexual harassment. Now, what is this sexual harassment? It is defined as unwelcome sexual advances for sexual favors and other verbal or physical conduct of sexual nature. Sexual harassment may include sexually suggestive remarks, unwanted touching, sexual advances, requests for sexual favors and other verbal and physical conduct of sexual nature. 
Fine. So there are strict laws against this too. In 1993 ruling, the Supreme Court widened the test for sexual harassment under the civil rights law to whether commented or behavior in a work environment would reasonably be perceived and is perceived as hostile or abusive. As a result, employees do not need to demonstrate that they have been psychologically damaged okay, to prove sexual harassment in the workplace. They simply must prove that they are working in a hostile or abusive environment. Sexual harassment is not just a women's problem. Okay? Recently, a decision handed down by U.S. Supreme Court broadened the definition of sexual harassment to include states. Sexual harassment as well as harassment of males by female co-workers. That is also See, it's not like, you know, it can be either way, right? It's not like, uh, you know, like women is uh, uh, fall prey to this thing. Even male can fall prey to this thing, right? In this suit that prompted the court decision, a male oil rig worker claimed that he was singled out by other members of all the male team for uh, unwanted touching and treat. Okay, so there are laws for this thing. I hope this is clear to you. Is it clear? All right. Now let's switch over to the next law. See, when it, uh, let's uh, switch over to the next law. That is other employment laws. Several other laws impacting staffing practices as well. Uh, do you know about Fair Labor Standard Act? Do you know about Fair Labor Standard Act? Anyone? Okay. Now see. Uh, yes, when it comes, uh, uh, specifies the minimum wage, overtime, pay rules and child labor regulations. So you just cannot hire the child who is less than a specific age as a child labor. That is punishable act. And you have to pay a particular minimum wage. And if you are making someone do overtime, you have to pay them for the same. Right? The Employee Polygraph Protection Act outlaws almost all uses of the polygraph machine for employment purpose. Privacy laws provide legal rights regarding who has access to information about work history and job performance for employees in certain jurisdictions. Under the Whistleblower Protection Act, some employees who publicize dangerous employer practices are entitled to legal protection. Fine? Now, so let me show you the chart. The National Labor Relation Act, it was uh, published in 1935, it was, okay, requires employers to recognize a union chosen by the majority of employees and to establish procedures governing collective bargaining, fine. Age Discrimination in Employment Act, 1967 amended in 78 and 86, prohibits age discrimination against employees between 40 and 65 years of age and restricts mandatory retirement, fine. Occupational Safety and Health Act 1970 establishes mandatory safety and health standards in organization. So organization have to ensure your well-being in terms of health too. There are certain standards for that, right? Mandatory Retirement Act 1978 prohibits the forced retirement of most employees before the age of 60. Here in India it's like 62, sorry, not 60. Fine. Immigration Reform and Control Act 1986. Okay, this prohibits employers from knowingly hiring illegal aliens and prohibits employment on the basis of national origin of citizenship. So see, an employer, if you, if an employer knows that this person has got some criminal uh, history, okay, they just, they should not hire them, okay, um, because otherwise, uh, you know, as per this law, they will be put behind bars, okay. Worker Adjustment and Retaining Notification Act requires employees to provide 60 days notice before a facility closing or mask layoff. Okay, so if the company is doing mask layoff, put um, you know uh, snatching jobs from um, you know many many people, they have to give 60 days notice prior to that. Okay, clear? And um, you know Employee Polygraph Protection Act it limits an employer's ability to use lie detector test. They should not use it. They cannot use it. So in cases of criminals, whenever, you know, the police wants to do a lie detector test, they have to take, you know, permission from the court, right? Because that is not allowed, right? And Family and Medical Leave Act permits employees in organization with 50 or more workers to take up to 12 weeks of unpaid leave. So, okay, for family or medical reasons for each year. 
fine is this much clear to everyone any questions for me based on on what i have taught till now any questions anyone great so why are human resource laws necessary and what is going to happen if those these laws were not there you have to write one short paragraph on this why are these laws so important okay and if these were not there what will be the like how you know if these laws are not there how you can say the hello is my voice audible see if these laws are not there how the decorum of companies will change that is the thing fine so you have to write one short paragraph on this i hope the question is clear to you kelvin rajiv dilshan khadija prabha sheik जॉर्ज संदीप अंजू या सो वाई दीज लॉज आर सो इम्पॉर्टेंट प्लीज राइट इट आउ सी इफ हाउ द डिकोरम ऑफ कंपनीज विल चेंज इफ दीज लॉज आर नॉट देर is the question clear to you prabha are you writing the answer shek jord sandeep khadija dilshan rajiv and kelvin and jo i think jo has joined me So please write down the answers for the uh, answer for this question, and it should be short. And then after this, I'll tell you what is going, what we are going to learn after this. See, after this, we are going to learn about determining human resource needs. Okay, let me see your answer. Fine. is my voice audible okay shall we proceed ahead everyone out there george sandeep jo abdul prabha sheik khadija dilshan rajiv and kelvin great now determining right and it is an ongoing process right because if few employees are retiring or someone is being you know like fired they need new employees to work at the place or on or to work on the place of old employees who have retired or who have been fired right and if an emergency needs arises okay if they need a particular kind of employee for a particular kind of project then in that case also they have to staff some new people right so it's not like when when doing staffing they have to keep something in mind few things in mind not something okay it should be through proper planning recruiting and selecting they just cannot select anyone right there is a base for it right there is 
so they have to follow certain um, you know like they have to follow certain rules right so that they can land to a appropriate employee right who is suitable for that position okay the staffing is an ongoing process that begins with finding the right people through right proper planning if the planning is not proper you can never land to correct people the recruiting and selecting right but staffing doesn't end once employees are hired management must keep and nurture its people via training apprising compensating and implementing employment decisions that determine such things such as promotion transfer and layoff right so once the uh, you know staffing has been done it's not like the um, you know work of human resource department is over they have to continuously train their employees because you know unless and until they are going to train it how they are going to get groomed appropriately in terms of work, their skills right they might be having skills but it has to be groomed groomed it has to be brushed up right and they should be compensated to boost their morale right to motivate them right they should be promoted promotion is also motivating right transfer is also needed right and layoff is also the part of uh, staffing only you know if someone has been hired and um, you know they are not working up to the mark or if they come they are like the surplus staff for the company they are going to get things slip right everyone is it clear okay now human resource planning so the first step towards recruiting someone is planning if the planning is not up to the mark what is going to happen if the planning is not up to the mark what is going to happen they will never land to an appropriate employee and uh, all the efforts will go in vain right exactly the first step in the staffing process involves human resource planning human resource planning begins with a job analysis in which descriptions of all job tasks and qualification needed for each position are developed so they see before publishing a ad for a particular job they have to you know they have to work on it they have to write it appropriately in that you know job description will be there qualification is there if any level of experience is needed that will be there so that particular you know appropriate candidates they can find um, appropriate candidates right a job description is a written statement of what a job holder does how it's done and why it's done it typically portrays job content environment and conditions of employment so it's better to hire people who actually have appropriate experience okay okay see on the basis first of all they have to find the appropriate resumes right with the um, you know uh, things they are looking for right in terms of you know like uh, the experience level and uh, qualification right first thing is that thing so for that you know they have to publish this thing appropriately otherwise you know if they need a ca uh, ca will only apply if uh, you know it is being mentioned in that right and and once they have you know shortlisted appropriate resume then only you know they can decide whether this is, um you know candidate is up to the mark or not right in terms of what is being written in c the job specification states that minimum acceptable qualification okay in human must possess to perform a given job successfully right it identifies the knowledge skills and abilities needed to do the job effectively if this would be it won't be there suppose uh, if the company needs someone and they are not uh, publishing the ad appropriately what is going to happen in appropriate people are going to apply for the job right and the time they are going to waste on shortlisting the cvs will go in vain because they will never land up to they will never land to the appropriate candidates in terms of skills and all and qualifications right so that's why this is being needed job analysis is then followed by a human resource inventory which catalog qualification and interest next a human resource forecast is developed to predict the organization future needs for jobs and people based on its strategic plans and normal attrition fine exactly the forecast is then compared to the inventory to determine whether the organization staffing needs will be met with the existing personnel or whether managers will have to see if they already have staff who can work on that specific thing they decide over it that they can do it or they already have surplus projects on their head in in that case you know they will recruit a new employee or terminate the existing ones and then they will recruit a new one fine 
because they are they they also think the companies in terms of their economic standards right why they are going to keep a surplus staff right so they all, you know they are very economical they they think in terms of economy too right clear everyone being the part of an a particular you people might be working somewhere right or you might have worked earlier so you must be knowing all these stuff right this is very common right now recruiting strategy recruitment includes all the activities an organization may use to attract a pool of viable candidates viable candidates right effective so in order to attract appropriate candidates this uh, ad is being published okay effective recruiting is increasingly important today for several reasons why they need to uh, recruiting should be effective why is it being needed at company end right the us employment rate has generally declined each year through the 90 1990s experts refer to the current recruiting situation as one of the evaporated employee resources many experts believe that today generation x employees those born between 1963 and 81 are less inclined to build long term employment relationships than their predecessors therefore so nowadays you know people switch over a lot in terms of companies right but earlier people you know people during earlier era especially our parents they used to stick to job for the on the lifelong basis but in case of us we like switching over from one company to another right it's hard, it's very very hard for each one of us you know stick to a, a particular company for more than three to four years right this is what we do this is our nature right and see if they have trained an employee okay uh, and if that employee leaves them uh, you know it would be uh, um, the employee might get you know a good package somewhere else but it would be you know they will be you know it will be negative for them right they are going to suffer okay because they might have invested a lot of money in training that candidate and that candidate understands their system well now it's um, you know it's uh, yeah, uh, it's um, you know accustomed to that system and once that we that it they will again have to you know spend money on recruitment so it's um, we can say it's uh, their loss 100% their loss right so that's why you know they uh, that's why you know they they go for training in the same way like nowadays you know uh, companies what they have started doing they uh, they have got you know like vacations for you for the employees they give medical benefits they give a lot of facilities to the employees so that they can stick to them they have gyms at the offices they have um, you know like play uh, they have you know you can if you get bored you can play for some time at office right they arrange for parties every month okay so this is uh, this is because they want their employees to stick to them okay they just cannot afford to lose an employee they spend so much money on them right okay therefore finding the right in inducements for attracting hiring and retaining retaining is very important qualified person may be more complicated than in previous years nowadays you know they can hire you know they have good recruitment process they can hire an appropriate employee and they can train them also but the moment they start understanding work and they get experience they switch over so they have to anyhow you know you know retain the qualified person right So they do a lot of things for that to allure them to keep them tied up to their company, right, everyone? Keep in mind that recruiting strategies differ among organizations. So it's not like if one organization has a particular kind of recruitment process, the other organization will also follow that. That is not at all true, right? Although one may instantly think of campus recruitment as a typical recruiting activity many organizations use internal recruiting or promote from within policies to fill their high level positions right so some companies you know instead of hiring a new employee for a high level position they actually they uh, choose the employee from their organization and they uh, just give them promotion they promote them right open positions are posted and current employees are given preferences when these uh, employees become available internal recruitment is less costly than external search right it also generates high employee commitment development and satisfaction because it offers opportunities for career advancement to employees rather than outsiders so most of the companies they actually prefer to hire someone uh, from within the organization who's already working and you know who is willing to switch over to another department rather than getting external people 
fine because they will have again have to you know uh, spend a lot of money in recruitment and then training that new employee right clear and if the internal sources do not produce any acceptable candidate many external recruiting strategies are available including the following and see if uh, sometimes you know they hire an agent to get a right candidate for them right there are certain agencies for that right okay so that's it for today we are going to continue with this okay now uh, do you have any questions for me yeah outsourcing so that thing is also uh, you know like uh, blooming like anything the source agencies who are going to hire you know mediocre who are going to hire appropriate candidates for them and they pay them right any questions for me sandeep jo abdul abdul has joined very late including you okay prabha ashwin george shake khadija dilshan rajiv and kelvin okay so thank you so much okay yeah and don't forget to fill the feedback form and if you want me to cover something specific in next class uh, you can fill that in the feedback form and just put serious comments in the feedback form okay whatever you feel about the class just put that in okay nothing to allure you whatever you feel just put genuine comments in that thank you so much bye